folks, this is Terry Rahm and Don Bell here. We're down in Southwest Texas, and they're on a morning turkey hunt. I'm running one camera. Wes Morgan's running another one. And we're trying to uh, to get Don in on his first Rio Grande turkey call. Now, Terry Rahm's won the National Turkey Calling Contest of Pennsylvania State, all kind of turkey calling contests. But the good thing about Terry Rahm is he's a great turkey hunter. It takes a, a lot besides calling to be a great turkey hunter. What you have to do is learn the lay of the land and become a good woodsman and figure out where a turkey wants to come to. And this is one thing that Terry is probably one of the best young people in the country at. I started hunting with Terry Rahm when he was 18 years old. And if you notice there, he's telling Don where he thinks the turkey's going to come from, how he's going to come. And when Terry was 18, he went to work uh, for me down in Coffeville, Alabama, doing seminars and clinics. And the first five years we hunted together, we called in 165 turkeys for other folks to shoot. And we've had a lot of fun around the country. And each encounter you have with a turkey is going to be a different encounter because no two of them act exactly alike. And if you notice Don there, he's putting on the camouflage mask and everything. And Terry is giving him a few tips on uh, what to do and what to expect on it. And as Terry begins calling, he's using a black water turkey call. This is a single reed cut reed that's real raspy. And, you know, they're all kind of diaphragm calls that we make. We make uh, one reed, two reed, three reed, four reeds. We make a one and a half cut call, a two and a half, a three and a half cut call. And these cut calls don't do nothing but sound raspy when you start calling. You'll listen to Terry, you'll hear what I'm talking about here. As he begins calling, because there's a turkey been gobbling up you on the ridge you can see in the far distance. And uh, Terry starts calling to him with just a bunch of just plain old hen yips and a few cuts along. And, and Don's sitting there, and he's sitting beside him because there's an opening in front of him where you can kill a turkey. You just don't sit down any place. You see the turkey up on the side of the hill there that they've been listening to gobble. Now, he's... 250 yards away and he's in a full strut coming down through this thick brush here one thing about south texas it's uh, it's all bad country if you sit down beside it's going to stick you or anything else i mean it, everything down there got a sticker on it if it don't stick you or bite you you're in trouble uh terry's figured out which way the turkey's coming by the way he's walking and how he's gobbling he listens to him and the whole turkey just uh, starts strutting on down the side of the ridge there He's coming on down. He's walking fast. If you notice, that's the way a turkey is. Sometimes they'll come to you so fast to will scare you, and sometimes they seem like they take all day. In fact, I've sat down and called a turkey at daylight, and uh, it would be uh, uh, 12 o'clock before I actually shot the turkey, and I never moved out of the place I was sitting because he kept on drumming in front of me or gobbling and letting me know he was there. And uh, as a turkey gobbles and comes on in here, Terry gets the feel of how hot the turkey is and how well he wants to come in. He's telling Don here, if you notice, he's motioning for him because I'm running the camera standing right directly behind him. Wes is off to my right. He's telling Don that he's going to have to get up and move a little bit to the left if he's going to get a shot at the turkey because the turkey is circling and coming around to the left there. And uh, Don gets up there and just sort of hunkers down the bushes. A lot of people don't realize I shoot a lot of turkeys from a standing position. Uh, I just uh, hunker down behind some bushes or get behind a big tree and use it to, to use it as a blind or a silhouette, you know, to break out my silhouette to where the turkey can't see me. Notice old turkey's white head. That's one thing you can always tell about a turkey. It's either going to be white or red or got some blue on it. Them three colors are three colors you don't want to ever wear when you go hunting in the woods for turkeys because other people will mistake you for a turkey. And we got a great sport here in turkey hunting, but more people are shot turkey hunting than any other sport in the country. So be sure when you go turkey hunting, never wear red, white, or blue while you're out there hunting. And people today call lots better than turkeys do. Terry Rahm uh, beat any turkey in the world when it comes to actually down to turkey calling, and that's what you got to do. If you notice Don here, all you can see is his head and eyes sticking up there above the bushes. And old turkey finally struts on around and finally walks out of cow trail about 40 yards away. And just as soon as I get the camera focused on him, I tell him to shoot him. Y'all will hear me tell him to shoot him here, and we'll see what's going to happen right after he shoots. Behind them cedar bushes, and Don's running to him as hard as he can go because this is his first Rio Grande turkey. And he'll go hunting a long time in his life before he'll ever kill another turkey like this. And I want you folks to watch what's going to conspire here as he comes on terry jumps up and starts on over towards him you know he's tickled to death for him too don totes the old big turkey out here but this is a, a once what i call a once in a lifetime turkey in my lifetime i've killed 
probably 25 or 30 turkeys that had double beards. I've killed eight or ten that had three beards, but I've never killed a turkey with more than three beards. I've seen one with five beards and one with six beards in my life, but I've never seen uh, uh, a turkey killed on a hunt with me that had over three beards. And this one here is something real uh, unbelievable about the old turkey. He's four or five years old. As you can see, he's got about an inch and an eighth spur there. He's a real old turkey. and But the unique thing about him is his beard. You know, the National Wild Turkey Federation keeps records of these things, and if any of you are not a member of the National Wild Turkey Federation, y'all need to call them or write Edgefield, South Carolina, and uh, join the organization because it'll teach you a lot about wild turkeys, wild turkey management, and what's happening around the country in turkeys today because there's more turkeys here today uh, than there was when Columbus got over here, and there's more white-tailed deer. Uh, than there ever has been before. So the two organizations as a sportsman you should belong to. One of them's the NRA, the National Rifle Association, and the other one is, now look at the Gomer Pyle look. There old Don throwed his head up there shining for the cameras, you know, because he feels pretty proud about killing a turkey with four beards, and I would too if I ever kill one. But this has been an exciting hunt, and I hope you folks enjoyed the, the scene there and the turkey coming in, and I hope you learned a little bit about sitting down and not being scared to get up and move. When you know the turkey's moving right or left, get up and get a new position to where when he comes in, you can kill him. So practice hunter safety and get out there and go after a gobbler next spring. You know, folks, the prettiest time of the year to me is the springtime when, when new life comes around. The trees start budding out like that beautiful dogwood there, and you got your Easter violets there, they, that bluish color, and you got your May apples there. They're just nothing like being in the woods in the spring of the year. You know, as traveling around the country like I've got to do, the good Lord's blessed me in a lot of ways, but what my eyes have seen is what's made me a rich man, not how much money I've got, and I say that to anyone. It's what you see in your lifetime that really makes you rich. It's what you get to feel for. See this red bud here. In the springtime when turkey season comes around, there's nothing like being in the woods. It's like in the fall of the year when the leaves start changing and a new season comes on. Notice the old wild turnips there. They done turn yellow on top there. And this is just a good site for a hen turkey to be out in to nest next to it because little turkeys have to have grasshoppers or insects to survive. 90% of their diet is insects. So clear cuts, open pastures and fields, that's where you're going to find turkeys in the springtime. And that's what we're doing is scouting, you know. We spend literally hours and hours, just like Terry calling here. We ride up and down old logging roads, get out and call next to every clear cut we see. Anywhere that there's a possible nesting site where turkeys are going to be, that's where you're going to find us in the springtime. If you notice Terry here, he's putting on some, some camo makeup. This is some of Tink's camo makeup. It's, it comes in a dust. It's camo dust, and I like it real well because it smears on, and it's not greasy, and it's real dull, and... When you want to bow hunt for turkeys, you got to be totally camouflaged. You got to keep all the movement you can. There, Terry is asking me. I'm running the camera again. He's asking me, how does he look there? And uh, I tell him he needs to get around his eyes a little more with some of that stuff there in his ears. And he gets it smeared all over him. You can get it in green, brown, a uh, bunch of different colors. And me, I like the dark shades better, though, because I like to get in the shadows when I'm hunting. If you've been noticing this video, most of the time we set up, we try to set up deep in the bushes or up under a tree or a blow down or somewhere especially bow hunting you got to have something to get behind you've got to have the edge i call it you've got to have something that you can get behind that blocks that turkey's view of where you're at and then let him walk past and shoot him when he comes past you and if you notice you look right here you can't even see the hunter in that position right there that's how good camouflage is you notice he just took a step there and he's walking towards me you know and when you're out there in the woods in the spring of the year and you're looking at the flowers and the trees, this is early May right here. One thing up north especially, you don't have it in the south, you don't find them very much, and you'll see Terry reach down here and pick it up. This is something I really enjoy in the springtime when I'm up north turkey hunting, and that's uh, mushroom hunting. This is a morel mushroom here. Michigan's probably got more than any place I've ever been. And uh, you get a bunch of them and put a little... Uh, uh, butter in a skillet and cut them things up and put them in there and saute them down and uh, they make anything good I love eating them anyway if you notice Terry's dress there and his camo and everything there 
he's just ready for a turkey hunt. And I want you to join me and him as me and Terry go along. We're trying to uh, to get this old evasive gobbler with uh, with a bow and arrow. And we're going to kill several of them in this video with bows because I think it's the highest challenge of any hunting in North America. I don't know if you heard that or not, but I was blowing a new owl call that we've got. You blow through, and it really squalls good, and turkeys really love to gobble to it. And if you heard the old turkey there, he gobbled way off. You'll see me and Terry as we get a little closer, and we uh, we blow the call again to try to locate where he's at. I'm not sure where he was. I'll blow it, and let's see. I couldn't hear him. I couldn't hear him. He was right down there, right off the point of that other ridge going down there. Well, you get right up there beside that whole big tree there. It's got that little tree blowing where you can stand there. That big cherry tree. Well, if you and noticed me then, I told Terry tree, right? I couldn't hear the turkey yeah. gobble. When you're owl hooting or blowing, call, or blowing a turkey call or blowing a crow call and you're blowing it real loud trying to locate a turkey, and that turkey cuts your call. He gobbles while you're calling. You won't hear a lot of them. So a lot of times I call it short yipping to them or short owl calling. Instead of making the whole owl call, I'll just go, hoo, 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 hoo. I won't finish the owl call. Or if I'm using a turkey call, I'll just go and cut it off. And when I do this, I catch the turkey while he's gobbling. So once I call a couple of times normally, then I do that. And let's watch Terry here as he puts a call in his mouth and does a little calling. If you notice, Terry got it behind a great big old tree there. Something to block any of his movement or anything. Something he can just peek around. Turkey hunting with a bow is a peek-a-boo situation. You want to be able to where that you're blocked to where when that turkey comes out, you've got some bushes in front of him. The place that we picked out here in front of Terry is real thick except for a couple of openings he can shoot through. It's got a lot of greenery in front of him. It's got a big old blowed down tree that the turkey's got to walk around and be within 15 yards. Notice that hole down through there? That's a shooting lane, one on the other side. But in this shooting lane here, Terry can't shoot because of all them green bushes there. But you can see that little hole. You've got to have you some shooting windows to be successful turkey. And this old turkey here uh, comes walking on up through here. And uh, uh, he was really looking for a hen there, and Terry had him all fired up. And when he gets on up there, I want y'all to watch him for the next few minutes. I'm not going to say anything till, uh, till he gets to goblin, uh, because I want to tell you one thing before I quit talking on this thing here. A turkey really gets worked up when he starts gobbling every time you yip, or before you finish calling, he'll gobble. That turkey really wants to see you, and that's really when a turkey's worked up and you're fixing to get a shot at him. So let's listen to the old turkey and Terry do some calling. This turkey's about 25 yards from Terry right now, just down the hill a little bit. He's behind all that green stuff from him, and he can't shoot him, so it's just a, it's a waiting game now to see if he'll walk on to his left. The old turkey will and go behind all that brush and everything and walk on out and open it on down the hill. And what you have to do, you, if you've called a lot of turkeys up, you can realize where a turkey can come to you and can't come to you. And you see him circling on down the hill there. He's got to go around that thick stuff to come out. So you can get a shot at him. So if you just sit out in the wide open, you're not going to get many shots with a bow. You have to get it in to where you've got that 20 or 25 yard shot or you're just not going to be real successful with a bow when it comes to turkey hunting. Uh, with a gun, you know it's a 35 or 40 yard shot. A lot of people never heard a turkey drum. Y'all listen to this turkey here. It's, a lot of people call it spitting. They go... Mm -hmm. And that's when he throws his feathers out. You notice Terry's using a bare uh, broad head there with a game stopper on the back of it there. And uh, his bow's set at 65 pounds. Notice how good that camouflage blends in with that big old tree there.
Notice how that turkey gobbles every time before Terry finishes calling. This is when you know you got a turkey coming to you. This is the only time calling to a turkey that I can tell you I'm fixing to get a turkey up there. When I call and he waits 10 or 15 seconds to gobble, he's telling me to come to him. When he's gobbling, when you're calling, he's coming to you. You notice a hole down in there to the left. That's where Terry plans on shooting a turkey. If he ever walks through there, he's 20, 22 yards away. Just, it'd be a, a good shot. He's got two openings he can shoot through. One's on pass that, and the next opening, if he can't draw there, if he can't get his bow back. So it's all a, it's all a waiting game to see what's gonna happen here. He's starting his draw. He's seen the old turkey starting to move through the bushes there, and he wants to get it drawn back just before the turkey gets there. He starts his draw just the second he sees him, and he knows he's behind a few bushes. He gets it drawn back and lets the turkey come on out and opening. He's trying to pick the right pin out. He, he shoots pins just like I do. He's got one set at 12 yards and one set at 20 yards, and he knows the turkey's 20 to 22 yards away, so he's just watching here, waiting to try to get a shot in the back. That's the best shot you can shoot a turkey with a bow, is shoot him in the back. If you can break his back, you got him. If you go under the back, you generally go through the liver and all, because his heart's not any bigger than your thumb, so that makes it tough. The old turkey's walking on away from him. He hit him in the back, but he hit him just a little low, the old turkey's run. I'm trying to see what's going on there, and Terry breaks and runs. I, I thought the turkey stopped right there, but the old turkey run off, so Terry takes off after him. Terry's like a ridge runner anyway. He can run wide open, and uh, I don't really like that running real fast, but uh, when you shoot a turkey like that and they don't leave any blood trail, you got to get to him and try to keep him in sight the best you can. Generally, they'll run out there 100 yards or so and squat. I've shot 41 with a bow. And I've shot through 11 that got away. If the arrow goes clean through them, they seem to get away. Uh, I don't know why. I guess it's because it's such a little oh, kill oh, zone. But uh, get, if the arrow stays in them, you nearly get them all. Okay. okay, Get to him, get to him. I always, when I shoot an animal, I get to him as quick as I can, especially a turkey or something that's as little as he is. I like to get there and get him down on the ground and put my foot on his head unless he's already dead. And uh, this old turkey run over under the edge of that treetop. Are they bad about hiding, running up in treetops? Or if there's a little creek bottom there, or in the south they call them branch bottoms, they'll run up under that hollow ground up under there and hide under there and squat. So the old turkey here, he uh, he run up there and hid under that treetop there. And uh, I really didn't need to shoot him again, but we shot him anyway to make sure that uh, he wasn't going to get up and run off. Uh, first time me and Terry ever went bow hunting for turkey, we went to Nebraska, and he killed one the first evening. It weighed 22 and a half pounds, and uh, uh, I killed a Jake. I didn't get an old Tom out there with my bow, but uh, we had a lot of fun chasing him. I think I shot it four more. I didn't hit. So you, we're gonna make a video one day of all the bloobs we make. I mean, all the misses we make. We're gonna put them on like these baseball stars are doing now, and the football stars. We're gonna have all the hunting misses and falling out of tree stands and other little things that we do. Get him, put a tag on him. Go back to camp and see what we can get. Try to call up another one. Let's do it. He's a big, t he, might, he weighed 20 pounds. He's 18, 20 pounds. Yep. Folks, you know, I've been real lucky getting a turkey on all over the United States like I have. And three years ago, I started applying for a turkey permit in the state of Michigan. You see, Michigan's on a drawing, and that means that you've got to put an application in early in the, in the first of the year and try to get drawn to get a permit to actually hunt turkeys. They issue uh, 18,000 turkey permits in the state of Michigan, and I've got to say that the Michigan 
Conservation Department has probably done one of the best jobs on managing turkeys in the whole United States. And they've also done a great job on deer management by getting to go up to Bear Archery's camp every year up at Rose City, Michigan. I have seen literally hundreds and hundreds of wild turkeys. And with no fall season, I hadn't been able to, uh, to ever get an opportunity to hunt up there. And so I kept putting in for a spring permit, and I got drawed last spring. And the turkeys really haven't had a lot of pressure on them, and they're really one of the the better states to try to bow hunt wild turkeys if you're lucky enough to get drawn. There's only a few states where that the, the drawing situation is going on now because uh, the turkeys are really coming on good. If you look in this scene right here, you see a, a gobbler and a whole bunch of hens there, and this is not uncommon to call up a whole flock of turkeys in the springtime whenever you're out there hunting, and a lot of times you get an old long beard turkey too if you've seen right there. Now... You'll notice me here, uh, I'm fixing to do something when I bow hunt that I always do. I hunt from a blind spot. I don't care what kind of turkey hunting it is. When I'm with a bow, I figure out a way to have something in front of me to keep that turkey from seeing me. If you noticed uh, a while ago on the video, you seen Terry Rahm standing behind a tree. So I always get a tree or get some bushes or get in a treetop or I make my own blind. If you notice there, uh, you see my fluorescent orange turkey tote. I don't go anywhere uh, where I'm turkey hunting that I don't have some type of fluorescent orange to tie on a turkey if I'm lucky enough uh, to shoot one because I want the turkey to, uh, I want another hunter to see him. If you notice there, I've got some PVC pipe that I've sprayed black, and I've got it to where I just stick it all together. There's none of it glued or anything. I use elbows and tees and I took a piece of camouflage brown net, and if you look how it blends in with the ground, wherever I'm going to make a blind at, I want it to look just like my surroundings. And I took that camouflage net, and I sewed around each end of it, and I cut me a hole in the middle. And this is a blind to be right in front of me while I'm trying to call a turkey. Uh, we had been out that morning. I'd been up to uh, Alpena, uh, Michigan. I'd been out with a gentleman named Al Skiba who owns a lumber company up there and a pool place and we had just heard turkeys and seen turkeys everywhere and i went back in that that morning a little later trying to find some if you notice there's a porcupine he's i seen porcupine never seen them till i went to michigan i've been all over the country and i've never seen one of them they move so slow you can't believe it i don't know what they're good for other than sticking a dog i guess but they eat all the trees down there. they're sort of like a beaver they eat all the bark down and everything if you notice i'm setting my blind up there where i can get ready to uh to try to shoot through it. If you notice it comes loose a little bit, but it's real light. I can stick it in the back of my, uh, if you noticed I was wearing a, a turkey vest instead of a backpack, I use the same vest when I bow hunt. And I use an, a super hen turkey call. I really like a super hen to do a little calling on. And I've got my bow set up and I always start calling when I first sit down. That's one of the first things I do. I've got on some uh, Tink's camo makeup and I'm using a release there. And if you notice my my bow there, I've got that shooting hole where I can draw right through it, and I'm checking it out to make sure that everything works fine because on a turkey before this, see, you, you folks not getting to see all the misses we made. I mean, we made lots of misses. One of them I reached up and started to draw my arrow back through the hole there, and I caught the blind and pulled the blind down on top of me. That's a real good one. Uh, we seen lots of turkeys while we was up there, and I called up a lot of big turkeys, old turkeys, and uh, I never seen turkeys that's not hunted very much quite as alert as some of these was and i made a a, a real long shot uh several of them in fact this one here was about uh 35 yards he was a long ways and i i hit the turkey which was a miracle but uh since bear gives me errors and so forth i can shoot as much as i want to but i hit the turkey through the top of the back and he, he went out through this beaver pond here and uh if you notice there i'm trying to get him he's all wet and everything uh, turkey had a 12 and a half inch beard, one of the longest beards I ever killed on a turkey. And uh, I just broke his back there. And you can see the hole that bear razor had done in his back there. It cut a hole, looked like big as your fist. I never seen one cut like it. And it broke his back. That's the reason he was jumping like he was. There goes a squirrel running. I had everything around me running. I reckon they all thought I was going to shoot him. Uh, but squirrel season wasn't in there. I would have shot him. But I want you to look at what a beard on that turkey. Turkey weighed 17 and a half pounds. He wasn't. Uh, a real big turkey like some turkeys I've killed, but he looks like he's drowned it in that water. But I had a great time hunting in Michigan this year, and the Michigan Conservation Department's done a super job.
Folks, I'm Ben Lee, and I'm running the camera this afternoon along with Wes Morgan, and we're going along with a friend of ours, Don Bell. You've seen Don earlier in the video with Terry Ron. Terry giving Don some tips on how to call turkeys and to hunt turkeys, and Don's hunted with me plenty of times, and... Uh, Don's hunting a Rio Grande turkey, which he's after his uh, his second one. He's already killed one with Terry, and he's after his second one. Now, there goes a rabbit. Wes is filming a rabbit. When you sit out there for two or three hours at a time trying to, to get a turkey or a deer, any kind of wildlife that comes along, you're going to film it. It's a lot of fun. Now, Don's been calling here about 20 to 30 minutes, and he's using a wood to make a turkey call because you can gobble on it. You can do the hen yep, the cuts, and everything. And, and old Tom turkey started way off down on the creek bottom there coming towards him. And uh, I've taught Don, and so has Terry, uh, you do a lot of calling to a turkey. You don't just call to him once or twice. Once you get him worked up, you keep right on talking to him. You get him up there real close, and the only time you shut up is when you want that gobbler to find you. And as you notice right here, that's a beautiful time there, and he's walking out in the opening, and he's uh, about 60 yards from Don coming up there. This, this little open green field on this creek bottom here, and Don's done seen him. And he's easing his gun up. Now, this is when the action's fixed to start. This is one thing I want to tell you. As a, as a hunter myself, I've done this bunches of time. As you see the old gobbler walking out and Don's back in the shadows here, I want you to watch what's fixing to happen at 25 yards. Don completely misses a turkey, and he takes off running and flying, and Don shoots him on the third shot and knocks him down. Well, he's running to him to make sure the old turkey don't jump up and run and fly again and puts his foot on his head. That's the first thing you always want to do when you get to a turkey. Make sure you put your foot on his head because he's liable to uh, to spur you if you try to pick him up. So Don's got his foot on his head waiting for the old turkey to to give up the ghost there, and he's, uh, he's flopping all over him, you know. He's just about done for, though, you know. It was a real good shot there on the third shot. Winchester loves people like Don that shoots a lot, and I do the same thing. But if you notice the old big turkey here, there's nothing like hunting uh, the wild turkeys across the United States. You know, we got all these four different species, and and Don there was successful today because he learned some tips from, from us. He learned how to use a wood or make a turkey call. He learned how to gobble on it and to call on it. We'd heard turkeys that morning, and he went back in and built him a blind down next to the creek bottom there where it was a good strut in there, and he took and done a lot of practice on his wood or make a turkey call before he went hunting. So the next time you're going to go turkey hunting, get you a turkey call and practice a bunch on it. You know, folks, it's really great that you get an opportunity to go to these turkey conventions and so forth and get invited to go on some really great turkey hunting places. This is a, a Wilson Arts lease out of Temple, Texas, and it's really managed for white-tailed deer and turkeys, and it's some of the best I've ever seen in the United States there. If you notice, this is one of the uh, watering troughs here that they have for uh, uh, cows and for sheep and for goats and uh, there's one of the holding tanks there and if you notice that tree right there there's only two or three of them and that's the turkey roost trees right here in this in this valley here and there's a windmill it's just old scrub oaks and uh, live oaks and there's not many trees for them to uh, to roost in and there are turkeys literally everywhere out here everywhere you find a windmill or a watering hole and a few trees you're going to find turkeys you know one thing i've learned folks is bow hunting You've got to use every advantage you can. I don't go anywhere that I don't build a blind or get behind a rock or get behind a creek bank or get in a treetop or something. This is a water hole out in South Texas. We own Wilson's Art, a hunting lease down there. Wilson Art's the largest manufacturer of uh, a laminated plastic, uh, sort of the countertops you got at, at your house and all, decorative countertops and all that kind of stuff. they just uh, the largest in the world, and just about everybody has some type of... Uh, Wilson Art product in your house. Uh, that was a blind beside a water hole, and I built up a little one, and I didn't have any luck, so I went back and got my bow saw, and I built a blind. Now, this is what I call a blind for bow hunting. I'm talking about you got one shooting lane, maybe two at the most, and you get it, and you fix it to where you're comfortable, and you can't see out, but you got to build it close to a water hole or somewhere where turkeys are going to move during the day. It's, we've been out here in Texas, and it's rained nearly every day never seen it rain as much as it has and we've had a great time 
Uh, we've been out there with a, a bunch of the people from Wilson Art, and we've took a bunch of them turkey hunting, and we just heard turkeys every day. And after the morning hunt, we've been setting up with the camera in these blinds trying to call some turkeys. If you notice there on the leaves there, you can see uh, water everywhere. Uh, I just never in my life seen it rain so much. We had cameras hid under plastic bags and everything else, but when you're trying to get a video done, you do everything you can, and we're just working on it. Uh, we got pictures of armadillos. When you're sitting there with a camera, you try to get shots of everything you can, you know. Uh, you don't pay some money. It gets pretty dull sitting there, you know. And uh, all I do is just sit there and call. And uh, you can't call too much when you're calling the turkeys anyway. And uh, I got my bow release on there. And I just sit there, you know. And every now and then a hen would come by or something. And we had some gobblers to come by, but they was out of range. And... Uh, we did get me uh, missing one on film. We're not showing it, but I did miss a big one. Uh, but here goes a hen right here walking by at about uh, 25 yards. And uh, she couldn't even tell I was there, you see. And uh, I let her pass on by, and I'd start calling again. Uh, seen turkeys uh, way off at a distance, lots of them. There's two gobblers strutting right there. Uh, at one time, I think uh, I was looking at five or six gobblers off in a distance out my blind there. Uh, coming down that water hole, every one of them come down there every morning about 10, 11 o'clock all day and so forth. I want you to look at here now. <clears throat> this is a Texas jackrabbit, and it's the most unique footage you've ever seen. I want you to watch these two rabbits. I know you folks have heard the old saying about being pissed off. Well, I want you to watch that right there. That rabbit peed on that other rabbit. We're going to show it to you in slow motion in a minute. That's the most unbelievable footage I've ever seen in my life. Terry Rahm was running the camera. Look at that rabbit shaking his head trying to get that stuff off his ears. I'd shake mine too if it was me. But them rabbits come out there going that water hole. I ain't never seen nothing like that. And uh, in fact, Terry got to laughing so hard we like to, we like to run the turkeys off. You notice me how I'm sitting there. I'm just waiting. I got my uh, release hooked up on the string. I got my bow ready. I got the camo makeup on. I got everything I can get on, and it's just a waiting game. Uh, this particular uh, a morning, I think I've been in the blind about two and a half hours. And uh, what keeps you there is hearing these doggone turkeys off at a distance gobbling and answering you. But there's so many of them that you don't never know if one's coming or not. That's the bad part about it. Uh, you, you, at times, you hear 15, 20 turkeys down there in South Texas. There's nowhere in the world that's got turkey hunting like South Texas. South Texas for, for the Rio Grande turkey and then Missouri for the eastern turkey is the two best it is in the whole United States. There's just no place has turkeys gobbling like these two places do. And finally, one of these old turkeys makes his mind up and starts coming on down there. Uh, Terry had the camera on there. You notice me hunkering down. I can tell he's coming because I can see him through the edge of that blind off out there at about 20 yards. And uh, I draw on him. He's walking. I had to make a bad shot. I hit him right over his uh, uh, back legs up through the uh, right of what people call a, the short leg of a chicken or a turkey is where I hit him and it went right through there. I hit him in the back end, really, if you want to know the truth. That's what you call a Texas heart shot anyway. And uh, I shot feathers out of him everywhere there. Uh, one reason I'd set up or notice that place on the dirt there, that's what you call a dusting place. Them turkeys have been dusting there every day, them hens had. And they nest in close by when they do that. And they come out there and, uh, and dust herself to get mites, I guess, and ticks and, and other insects off their body. Well, I shot all the feathers out of him there and... Uh, he went running off out through the woods there. I didn't figure he was going to go too far because, I mean, I hit him good. I could hear him flopping as he was running out through there. And I'm just walking along there trailing him, seeing what I can do. You know, uh, you won't find much blood out of turkeys. I've shot lots of them with a bow. And uh, nearly all of them, if the arrow stays in, I recover. Most of them, if the arrow goes through, I don't. That's the reason you want to use a game stopper anytime you're turkey hunting. And you don't need that bow set on. 75 80 pounds 55 pounds is perfect for turkeys because the arrow won't go through and through them and you got a lot better opportunity of, of getting one notice old turkey there he's uh he'd give up the ghost there and run there in the bushes and fail dead uh, uh i didn't i don't guess he went 75 yards but if you get up and you and you push one when they run like that uh if they ever get up and fly you won't never find them because i've lost uh, the ones i've lost i never did find them because they flew off and then uh, out there in Texas, you got to put a tag on each one of them. Some states you have to do that, and some states you don't. Down in Alabama, you can kill six, and you don't have to tag any of them. Uh, and that's the reason that a, a lot of people like to come to Alabama hunting because they got a, a several bird limit. Uh, Texas uh, used to you couldn't hardly turkey hunt at all in Texas, but their game departments come along a, a real good uh, 
away now they've got a, a three-week season the first year it was about five years ago was just a week but now it's, it's getting a longer season and really great turkey hunting folks we back down here in texas on wilson arts lease and we're uh we're out there in the field with a good friend of mine up in Tennessee, old Joe Woods and Terry Rom and Don Bell. And I've got Joe out trying to teach him a little bit about turkey hunting. Joe's not into bow hunting, so he's got his shotgun. I want y'all to come along with us, and I'm not even going to talk. I'm just going to let y'all see what happens here as, uh, as we try to call this old turkey in, and Joe tries to, uh, to get a turkey. I took Joe on his first turkey hunt, he's come a long way, but he's still got a long way to go, as y'all will see today. Joe. That turkey ain't very far. It's right up in yonder. Let's sit up right over here. Let's get over the side of these bushes. I thought by each one of us getting on each side of the, the bushes there that we have a better chance of shooting the old turkey. And I'm loading my gun there with them Winchester double X's and uh, Joe's sitting on the other side. Joe should have got forward four or five foot as y'all will see here as we uh, we get to calling this old turkey. We done heard several of them gobbling there and uh, got the cameraman. Joe's trying to pick him a hole out there. And uh, y'all just watch what happens here. Sometimes they get away is all I know. <laughs> I didn't do so good, did I? <laughs> hey, I tell you. <laughs> I thought you was going to kill him out in the road there. I never did see him. You didn't see him? No, but I sure learned a lesson. <laughs> I'll never get behind one of them bushes again. I'll get in front of that son of a gun. Every time. Every time. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Them, them eyeglasses you wear, where are they at? In my pocket. <laughs> you gonna put them on from now? I'm gonna put them on. I work. thought you was a pheasant shot. I couldn't even see the bead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Let's, go them glasses. Let's go find one. You know, folks, uh, uh, we're trying to teach people how to turkey hunt. Uh, it gets to be where it's almost uh, as funny watching them and the things that they do uh, and how they uh, uh, just get excited about an old turkey. A big buck deer is the same way. Here we are later on during the day. And I got Joe, and we done heard some more turkeys down here on the lease. And I'm showing Joe there how to sit down. And I'm going to start calling here, and I want y'all to watch how I try to get him to put his gun up on his knee, how I get him to set up, and uh, how I run the call, and all the things that we'll be doing. So I'm going to stop uh, narrating this thing again. Y'all just listen to the natural things of what went on out there while I'm trying to call this old turkey in for Joe. Never seen nothing like this. <clears throat> Where's your glasses? Oh, I better put them on. I missed that last. Joe. I ain't gonna miss this one, Ben. Joe. <laughs> Joe, don't tell me you're not gonna miss now. I've heard that too many I'm times. I'm gonna get some blood or something. Let me tell you something. This turkey hunting can get awful, awful technical. It gets in and just kills you. I'm gonna use the box call a little bit here. Can't call too much turkeys. I 
that's one thing I like about a box. You got one side, it'll have one pitch to it, and the other side, it'll have another one. The old gobbler thinks it's a whole flock of hens up there having a party, and he wants to be in on the party. Mm. It will be when he gets up here. I'll show you something I do, Joe. What's I'm going to wood about this. We want to turn gets up here close. I don't want to crawl on this box stall. I got to do it with a hide. I got me an apron built that hangs around my neck. Mm. Slide this little box right up under here. Keeps the head good, don't it? I can call the turkey out there five yards doing this. You're sitting a little wrong to hold your gun up very long. Get that there left knee up. There you go. Now lock it up right there. Now ease your gun barrel down. Oh, get your gun barrel on down. Now ease it up on your shoulder here where you won't get tired. Of you. There you go. Now just let it rest right there. Just let it be right there. Let me call again and see what we hear. Joey's gonna walk out right down at that thick stuff. Ease your gun up and move it just a little bit to your right. Just a little bit to your right. Ease your gun up now. Ease your gun up. Just keep your gun barrel pointed right in there. He's gonna walk right in that opening. Come in, Joe. Damn, Joe, he flew off. You wasn't gonna miss, huh? Let me down, man. Let's go look to see if you got any feathers or whatever. Hey, I'm gonna have to get some more shells. Hey, I hit him after all, Ben. You hit him all over. Here's another feather right here. Joe, all you done was shoot the feathers out of him. Let me See right there? I don't see how I missed him. You didn't get nothing but breast feathers. You didn't shoot his head and neck. You must have held a gun low. I guess so. I don't know what it was. There's one thing about it. I seen him raise his head up. Well, he, he was in a full strut, and then he raised his head up and looked right down at the waters, you know, 35 yards. I told you I don't shoot nothing but them double X Winchesters. You ought to go to Winchester. It hip you a little bit, or maybe it won't be the shells. Maybe it's just you. This is three. And yesterday you one, this morning one, and now nothing. Gosh, dang it. You just teach them how to get the hell out of Dodge is what you do. Let's go hunt us some nothing. Okay. Maybe we'll get this. You know, folks, a lot of times whenever you're uh, hunting as much as, as I get to and take people just like Joe there, uh, you, you call up two or three of them and it gets to where you expect them to miss them. I mean, you don't really expect them to ever hit one because they get so excited. Now, why Joe missed that turkey, I have no no way of knowing. And we got back in the truck and we rode on around and, and there's 64 different uh, uh, stock ponds on this on Wilson Arch lease. And we just go to about 100 or 200 yards from each one of these top ponds, and we get out and start calling and face a turkey around there. They'll start gobbling, and when they do, we come in with the cameras and set up as close as we can and try to get across from the uh, uh, pond from where the turkeys are and try to call them around the pond. If you notice, sir, I've got Joe there sitting up in front of me, and uh, I'm sitting down there, and Terry Rom's running the camera, and you can see the lake down there in front of us. And... Uh, the old turkey's off down in there a pretty good way. He's gobbling, and it's uh, about 2 o'clock in the daytime. It's on way on over in the middle of the day, and uh, we got the old turkey to gobble, though, and uh, you can hear him gobbling in the background there. Uh, between myself and Terry, we're working on this one now. And this turkey does something a lot that you don't see happen a lot. I've had turkeys to run to me. I've had them to fly to me. I've had them to run across. Look at this one running towards Joe here. Kill him, Joe. And Joe finally hit one after all these Don't misses do he's done. And uh, let's just watch what happens here. <laughs> so, you 
Great. I had cramps all in them. There's I didn't another. think we ever called him up. That other turkey flew right down through there. That's right. He's a gobbler too, isn't he? Yeah, this is a fine boy. Got some big old spurs. I didn't think he'd ever gonna come. I sure didn't. Boy, he's gonna run over top of me. <laughs> well, I told you to shoot him. He was just jogging coming up through there. <laughs> Ooh. He's going to dodge, wasn't he? <laughs> In a hurry. Them double X has done a job on him. Whew. Well, let's get him and go back to the camp. Okay. Uh, You know, one thing, folks, whenever I do a lot of turkey hunting, I do a lot of uh, moving on a turkey, and I like to get around somewhere where I got some cover. Like uh, when I'm hunting down here in the south or I'm hunting up in the uh, mountains of Pennsylvania, wherever it happens to be, if I can get close to a stream after I've heard a turkey and I know where about where he's at, I start moving down that stream because that drowns out uh, the noise as I'm walking. If I'm hunting close to a railroad track, a train comes by, I use that train to get up and move if I'm... Uh, uh, close to a highway or somewhere, uh, a car comes by, I get up moving. The same way if I'm uh, uh, anywhere where there's noise going, an airplane comes over, I get up moving. Right here I'm slipping down a creek bed because I got uh, two reasons for that. Most creek beds has got sharp curves in them, and you'll have a bank that you can get behind, especially bow hunting, and it's just a, another natural blind like I was talking about earlier. Uh, when you got a place that you can set up on a turkey where you can ease down and nothing but your head sticking up over the bank, you got a real good change. Uh, of easing up there and that turkey not seeing you, you can peek up over and play peekaboo with them. And you've got a chance if you can listen to him and tell where he's at, what's going on. This is in a little old creek bottom. Uh, down here in the south, a lot of places you'll have a, a creek bottoms like this. There won't be no uh, mountain to it like in Pennsylvania. You're up in Pennsylvania where they got a lot of spring streams and all the water makes a lot more noise than it does down here in the south. I know up in the Georgia mountains, it's really ideal because it doesn't run so fast unless the rain comes, it makes too much noise. If you notice here, I'm right down at the ground level. We're running three cameras here today. And we got one right behind me down here in the creek with me. And we got one hit up on the side of the hill there. We've had a lot of problems this year with the turkeys picking out a cameraman somewhere uh, before he gets up in, in range to shoot. We've probably uh, had more misses than we have kills, that's for sure. This turkey here is about, oh, 90, 95, 100 yards away down this creek bottom here. And we'd heard him gobbling, we'd eased in there and set up on him trying to get it. You notice uh, a little movement in the camera there because our cameras are handheld. They're not set up on tripods. If uh, you set them up on tripods, you can't move very well. The, the cameraman can't. And uh, we do the best we can. If you notice me there from another angle with the camera, you see me down behind the bank there, and uh, that's one of the other cameras got it on a turkey. And at the same time, uh, it's tough, I'm going to tell you. You just can't believe how tough it is trying to get a turkey in and to, uh, to get a shot off at him uh, and, and everybody out there. I mean, it's, it's tough enough one-on-one, -on -one, but with a cameraman, it just makes it about 50 times harder, I think. Uh, the old turkey's down this little creek bottom here, though, 
And uh, down in the south, we call that a branch. It ain't big enough for a creek. Anything you jump across is a branch. If it ain't, it got to be big enough. You got to wait for it's going to be a creek. But up north, this would be uh, this is what they call a trout stream. We ain't got no trout down here in the in the south. The only thing we got on a stream like that's cottonmouth moccasins, and uh, I'm real familiar with them. One of them kissed me a couple of years ago and put me in the hospital. Uh, but this old turkey coming on up the creek bed there, uh, you can notice him. There's one thing about a wild turkey. Their old head be just as white as it can be. And there's just no color like that there, eastern wild turkey, how bright they are and how brown they are and so forth. And uh, this old turkey's picking gravel. You know, they have to have gravel to digest their food. That goes in their gizzard and it grinds up their food, you know. They really don't have a, a digestive tract like we do. And this old turkey there's picking him some gravel and just easing on down the creek bed there. Uh, one thing about turkeys in the springtime, if you watch them and you're around them a lot, You'll notice a lot of times the breast feathers will be wore down or, or moved a little bit, and that's from riding hens. That's from mating. Uh, the more they do it, the more they break the feathers off. And this old turkey here, if you notice one camera angle, he's right down on the edge of the creek. You can see the old turkey moving down the creek there at a different angle. And we tried to, you can see the, the, the microphone right there in the tree. If you'll notice, there's one of the mics hooked up in the tree right there. You can see it shining there. And the old turkey's down there about uh, 85 or 90 yards, and... Uh, I'm calling to him. I don't play with him when I call to him. I do lots of calling. And uh, I think that a, a turkey hunter that learns how to call a lot, you see, when a turkey gobbles, that doesn't mean he's coming in. But when he gobbles when you call, he's accepted you, and nine out of ten of them's coming in. So the next time you call into a turkey and you hear him uh, uh, gobble, and you call and he doesn't gobble right back, he's telling you to come to him. But if you'll start calling right after he gobbles, that's telling that turkey, I want you, I want you. And then he'll start gobbling faster, and you keep on picking at him, and after a while, he just can't stand it. He just wants to come up there and see if he can't get in love with you, and you have to shoot him, you know, to keep him off of you. That's what turkey hunting's about anyway. Notice how I got this bank here, and I'm in as close as I can get, and I'm not moving. I'm trying to be as still as I can, and the old turkey there, as he's walking, I wait till he goes behind that tree right there in front of me. When he does, I draw the second he goes behind it, and... uh about a 20-yard shot. It ain't very far. And I hit him real good. And uh, he goes right down, broke his back there. And uh, that's what turkey hunting's about. I mean, there, there ain't no way to uh, tell you uh, you're going to get some chances you'll get to draw on them. Some of them you won't get to draw on them if everything goes all right. And uh, if you let him walk past you, though, if you use a big rock or uh, get down in an old treetop or somewhere and let the turkey walk past you and use a decoy, you got a lot better chance of getting a turkey the next time you out there hunting. Folks, I'd like to thank you for taking your time to watch this video, and I want you to know by us playing them taps, we're honoring the turkey and we're honoring the deer when we play them taps. Anytime something dies that you honor, you, you play taps, and we all honor turkeys and we honor deer, and we love to hunt them and we love to eat them, and we love to have a good time in the outdoors, and you can have a good time and a safe time too. And I hope you learned some tips on hunter safety in this video. And some tips on turkey hunting, setting up for bow hunting, calling, using the different calls. And I'd like for you to go by your local sporting goods store and check for the Ben Lee product line of hunting products. That's turkey calls and deer calls. The next time you get an opportunity, check at your local sporting goods store for the Ben Lee uh, hunting product line. Thank you very much. <laughs>